Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's check in with Bitcoin as it's uh, made some significant moves since the last video. So in the last video, I was proposing that we were just having this three wave advance in wave four uh, and that I'd put my stop at 85 to uh, lock in a little bit of a gain and then get me out uh, if this fifth wave did in fact play out, which it ended up uh, doing just that. But now we're at another juncture where I believe it's uh, a good idea to be looking for another uh, entry opportunity. And in fact, I've uh, purchased uh, quite a large amount at uh, 7950 was my my fill price. So that's quite nice. Uh, not to say that this is done dropping just yet, although I think it's getting uh, pretty close. And uh, even on this four hour chart, you can see within wave uh, five here of C, of two you have a one two three four five down so that's looking quite mature uh let me just get the uh the tool out just to illustrate for you okay let's drop the degree down here one uh sure that that works for me so not to get too cluttered looking here on on this chart but uh you have you have something like this uh playing out Okay, uh, now is this uh, fifth of the fifth done here? Um, not necessarily, but uh, you get the idea that this is pretty mature in its decline and ready to have a decent reversal at the minimum. Now the thing is, <clears throat> this uh, as I've labeled it is an A, B, C expanded flat and that's where you have a three wave move down a three, three wave move up to a new extreme and then a five wave move down to a new extreme below the uh, termination point of wave A, expanded flat correction, okay? And that wave C has to end in that five waves. And that so far looks like what's happening. Now, alternate possibility is we have some sort of more significant peak here, okay? And that this is the first five waves down in a still developing impulsive decline. But even if that was the case, which by the way, I don't think it is at this point, uh, you would still, after you have this five wave move, moves down, five waves down, you would need some sort of proportional three wave corrective advance. Uh, and you know, let me just uh, like say we have a one down or something and we're gonna have a two up and then a three down. And again, I don't think that's happening, but let's just say it is you would still be expecting, so let me just do a fib pull. Um, hang on, do a fib pull off this uh, price high here. And then down to our current low. And okay, you'd still be expecting, you know, maybe a 50% or 60, 1.8% retracement, uh, which would bring us up to, oh, 8,900, you know, 9,200, uh, something like that. So even if this, overall five wave decline isn't being correctly identified in the overall context of the pattern in which it lies, the uh, individual five wave decline itself will still need to have some sort of requisite reaction upwards. So this is kind of the, uh, the difference between trying to trade your Elliott wave count. And by the way, the count is subject to change, uh, obviously depending on market conditions, or trying to trade the actual Elliott wave pattern which in my opinion is a much better way to go about it because if you've correctly labeled this pattern as a five wave decline, uh, regardless of whether it's an ending pattern that ends this wave C or if it's a beginning pattern that starts a larger impulsive decline, either way, the next move of significance, once complete, has to be to the upside. And uh, obviously if we have a three wave advance, that will have to change our mind as, as how this overall structure fits in the pattern. But if we have a five wave advance and we start breaking resistance levels and we also, I mean, obviously get above this uh, extreme here at uh, almost 10,000. If we have that, then we can be more confident. Okay, this was a wave two, okay. Uh, an ABC expanded flat wave two. And now we're coming up in some sort of third wave. But that doesn't matter at this point. All that matters right now is we have a five wave decline that looks near completion, if not completed and we're expecting some sort of upward move because of that. So uh, hopefully that's insightful for you. Now, uh, 
as far as how much deeper could this go if it's not already done declining? Well, we have this previous uh, extreme here, this smaller degree wave four as I have it labeled at uh, 7823. So let's just call it 7800 to be uh, simple. And then we have this 618 retracement, uh, Fibonacci retracement at uh, 7711. So again, let's call that 7700 just to be round number uh, straightforward. And uh, after that, I mean, we have the 786 retracement, although that's getting deep, although that's still technically acceptable, I wouldn't like to see it, that this would be a fairly uh, excessive decline in this fifth of the fifth, if that were to be the case. It just wouldn't be proportional, so it'd be a little more concerning. Um, so right now, uh, I'm kind of uh, thinking like, like along these lines. So I've, I've got my stop at 7,500 for now. And the reason I chose 7,500, well, it's not overly far away, so it's not a, a massive risk, uh, but it's still below the, well below the 618 uh, retracement level, which could be a good reaction point if it goes that deep. And it's also well below this previous support level and fourth wave extreme around 7,800. So for those reasons, uh, it's a reasonable stop to have in place right now. Uh, I mean, I'd hate to have it just come down and stop me out and then reverse, but uh, that's just part of the, uh, the game of trading. For all those times it happens, the one time where you get stopped out and it saves you from that you know, $2,000 drop or whatever, that's why you use stops because uh, I, can, I can get over being stopped out of a good trade and having to get in a little later a lot easier than I can out of, uh, you know, having my ass handed to me with a, a massive decline. That's just the way it is. Now, before I drop down time frames here on the four hour, so we had our oversold four hour RSI at this uh, wave three bottom and certainly had a bounce, although it was a corrective bounce. And uh, now we actually have what's called a bullish divergence in RSI. And I've mentioned this before, but maybe not recently. So that means that Okay, RSI is making a higher low despite price making a lower low. So that's showing you an exhaustion of the uh, bearish momentum. So it's called a bullish divergence. And you also have the same thing with your uh, four hour MACD. The uh, moving averages here are also making a uh, bullish divergence. Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll hide that, highlight that here with this little trend line. So bullish divergence there, and I'll just drop it down to the hourly time frame, okay? And uh, I'll zoom in a little closer, why not, right? And hourly, we actually had hourly oversold RSI, and that we're now starting to uh, come off of there. <clears throat> so um, I'll just delete those lines. So overall, looking uh, looking pretty decent here for a buy-in, and obviously. Uh, I felt strongly enough to buy it myself here. Now I do still have some dry powder, although I did add uh, quite a large position at 79.50. So um, we'll see how much deeper it goes, if any. Now what I've done here is I've drawn a base channel and that's where you, uh, well, let me just label this uh, smaller degree thing. So it makes a little more sense. Okay. Wave five may be complete, maybe not. I'll just leave it kind of down here for now. Uh, so when you draw a base channel, you take the uh, origin of wave one, connect it to the uh, extreme of wave two, and then project it off the termination point of wave one, and that gives you this base channel, which happens to be, okay, well, first of all, it happens to confirm third wave price action when you break out of the base channel, which it does, or which it does, in this case, you see as soon as it broke out, consolidated around that base channel trend line a bit, uh, the lower boundary line, and then just fell down in the third wave. So that's confirmation, visual confirmation. And then we had our requisite ABC advance for wave four and see how, uh, well, first of all, I, I did a uh, corrective channel for wave four. So once I had this A up, B down, and we were starting to come up here, I, uh, again, just, it's like a, a base channel, same idea. In this case, it's a corrective price channel for a, a corrective wave. I connected the termination point in wave three with the uh, termination point of wave B, 
projected in parallel off the termination point of wave A. And maybe just to uh, make this easier to follow, follow along here, uh, I'll put these sub, sub labels on. And uh, I gotta drop that down. Okay. So, and then in parallel off of wave A, and that gives you a, uh, a channel to work from. And if you notice wave four, okay, it terminated basically right at the uh, extreme of this corrective price channel and also uh, not didn't quite nick the uh, lower boundary line of the base channel that we originally drew with waves one and two. Uh, so this is actually called the Kennedy channeling technique and uh, it was uh, created by Jeffrey Kennedy. And it's actually quite a good tool for uh, adding confidence to your wave counts. Um, and perhaps we'll talk more about that in a, a different video at some point. But anyways, now with this corrective uh, price channel, it also uh, confirms, okay, now we're coming down on wave five once we break out of the, the lower boundary line. And it did that. So overall, looking uh, quite mature in its decline, even on the small time frame. And then of course this completes that larger uh, fifth wave on the four hour time frame. And uh, let's go to the daily maybe here. And I'll switch over to the candles just momentarily here. This chart's getting a little busy here for my liking, but uh, bear with me. So now on the daily, um, if you look at the daily RSI, we're right around 37, 38, so roughly that, that 40 area that can act as a bull market support. So after we came up and broke bear market resistance, which was that 60 area, remember between 50 and 60 is bear market resistance for RSI. We actually went as high as 70, so or roughly thereabouts. So we legitimately broke that resistance, and now we're coming down and trying to form that bull market support, which happens to be in the range between 40 and 50, although uh, you can certainly forgive a few points of discrepancy. So 37, 38, still acceptable. I mean, if you go to 33, uh, that's getting uh, outside the uh, the guidelines for that kind of thing. But I just thought I'd bring that up as well. And uh, I'll just go the four hour again. That's kind of my preferred all around time frame. So hopefully this is helpful uh, for you guys out there. I know it's uh, it's very trying when we're used to crypto uh, just going up almost endlessly or seemingly endlessly. But this is really a more realistic uh, rhythm to be in and more indicative of you know regular markets. Although I must say it, even now it's, the percentage changes and the rate at which they change is still uh, fairly extraordinary by uh, normal market standards. But anyways, so looking good here. Uh, hopefully we get that reversal soon. And then as soon as we do get the reversal and let's say we get above that previous fourth wave extreme, which would be uh, just a short term resistance level. And that's uh, oh, 84, uh, 82, let's call 8,500 just to be uh, simple. Get above that, now we can bring our stop up to uh, whatever the current low is, if, it, if the current low stands at uh, 79.25, you can bring it up to just below that once we do that. Or if we go a little lower, whatever the low happens to be at the bottom, uh, we'll move our stop up there once we start breaking some resistance levels and have some uh, confidence that it is finally uh, breaking out. So I think I'll wrap it there for now. But uh, have a good night. And we'll uh, check in uh, as needed. Serial Trader signing off.